Hello, hello, and welcome to Freedom in Lockdown. I'm Tasik Kader, and this is a series by uh, Freddish Norman Foundation Pakistan, in which we are uh, having conversation sessions with some interesting, interesting liberals of Pakistan. Today is a much awaited, much anticipated session with a person who has been a mentor to so many of us in Pakistan, like myself. I met uh, this person in 1999, and I didn't know that this uh, person is going to uh, impact my my ideologies, my intellect, uh, my academic uh, yearning and learning so much. Now that I look back, I see, and I'm so very happy that that one fine evening, I went and met the one and only Mr. Zafrullah Khan, who, who calls himself a, a civic educator. He believes in civic education, he believes in democracy, in federalism, and he believes in imparting social change to the generations coming after one another. I'm so very happy and pleased and honored, in fact, to have Mr. Zafarullah Khan, the good old friend of FNF. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Tawseek, for your generous uh, recollection of memories. And uh, when we say freedom during lockdown, uh, we are lucky that we are communicating through new gadgets. And uh, I'm really honored that uh, we will be able to talk about uh, our shared memories and all, yeah. and uh, uh, keep the flag of freedom high even during lockdown. Absolutely, absolutely. Zafarbai, that's exactly the idea of these, uh, these sessions, to keep the flag of freedom high. Zafar Saab, I want you to recollect your first memories with FNF. Which year was that? How did it happen? And how did that become such a strong bond with Zafrullah Khan? Uh, if I recollect, uh, I was a student. Uh, and I had uh, acquaintance with the classical liberal philosophy. Uh, the book which Kaid Azam uh, mentioned that every young person should read, that was uh, a long essay by liberal intellectual John Morley. Uh, then when I was studying about the political career of Mr. Jena, uh, in United Kingdom, he had acquaintance with the Liberal Democratic Party of United Kingdom. So in that way, I attained and internalized the liberal philosophy first. And then I was a journalist. One of my late friends, Zafar Yaab Ahmed, introduced me to the then country director of FNF, Dr. Rene Klaff. And he said, that what you talk there is one organization, they work on that. Uh -huh. And I remember I shared one of Media Freedom report with him. We were working on environmental issues, human rights. And all of a sudden, I got a letter from Dr. Klaff for a meeting. And in 1998, uh, he was kind to send me to uh, International Academy for Leadership in Gomersburg to attend a seminar on press freedom, uh, which was eye-opener. And uh, I would say uh, this is how I got acquainted with the foundation. But then I have a second phase of my memories. When I uh, went abroad for my studies and came back, it served as a window of opportunity to join international development and ideas sector. Uh, when in 2000, I came back after doing my master's from London School of Economics, um, there was one uh, opening and I was lucky to be part of FNF team. And I uh, recall so many good uh, memories of the yesteryears with Anwar Saab and many other colleagues, Shah Saab, uh, Wasim Saab and many more. Uh, so this is how I got acquainted with the foundation. And tell me about Arno Keller. Arno Keller, quite interesting. When I was participant in uh, uh, IF seminar, uh, one gentleman who was conducting a training 
for uh, German citizens on civic education at the same academy. Uh, he uh, approached me uh, while knowing that I have come from Pakistan. And he said, I have been offered to work in Pakistan as the country director. So I said, warm welcome. And <laughs> this is a uh, first meeting. Uh, we had a very good conversation and uh, luckily when I joined the foundation, Arno was the country director. Later on, briefly, I had the opportunity to work with Peter Kochman. Uh, then I started Center for Civic Education and how the seed of Center for Civic Education was sown. Um, it has a very interesting uh, history again. Uh, to be honest, if I have to recall what foundation has done to me, I was a debater uh, and you know, uh, in Pakistani context, you love fiery speeches, oratory, rhetoric and all. What acquaintance with foundation did was it discovered a gene of a trainer in me. Oh, yeah. uh, so that I can, uh, before that, I, I never conducted any training. Uh, we used to have seminars, discussions, speeches, and all. Uh, but when I attended I, IF seminar and got acquainted with the foundation, so a gene of moderating for a decision making, for consensus building, these things were, of course, the gene was there, but it was dormant. Uh, relationship and uh, encounter with the foundation helped me develop that. And I can narrate many more. For instance, when I was at IF, uh, very few participants get the chance to visit the liberal archives, which is in the basement of the academy. So while I was a journalist, had curiosity, uh, I visited that, how they preserve the history, how they document the history. So the private museum on democracy and archives, which de I developed later on, uh, no, the yeah. idea clicked ve uh, very much there. So uh, Here's there, a could be, there could be By many By the way, that archive is now, in, in, is now in a very nice glass house. It's no more in the basement. Uh, Zafar Saab, uh, tell me, you, uh, your first love, your first profession, as far as I recall, was as a journalist. You, you have been a journalist. Do you miss those times? Do you think if you had pursued your career as a full-time active working journalist, now, if, if you look back, do you have any regrets or are you happy or do you still think that journalism is the main, uh, those are the real germs in Zafrullah Khan? To be honest, uh, as they say, Tosi, the first love never die. Journalism was my, my first love. And I retained the passion your wife in always one way or the other. Your, your wife uh, always thought she's your first love. Uh -huh. Your wife always so thought. Many, huh? So many. Oh. If I start counting, then your 30 minutes will be, uh, <laughs> will be very short time to recollect all the utopias yeah. and uh, so many other dreams. Uh, so, uh, I never quitted journalism, I quitted active journalism. Uh, when I was working with the Newman Foundation, I used to host the morning uh, television show. Yeah, I remember. Uh, this morning, yeah. uh, we developed internet radio, green press radio. Uh, then uh, we got opportunity to write. Uh, there used to be one very good magazine of the foundation published by the South Asian office, Liberal Times. Uh, which uh, tried to collate the uh, uh, a South Asian picture on one theme. So I contributed twice, thrice to that. And uh, I never stopped writing. I still run a website, citizenswire.com. Uh, so journalism is, uh, yes, I stopped earning from journalism. I didn't make it living. Uh, but the uh, how you communicate, how you express, uh, that is one medium which uh, is very effective. Uh, 
And now, while uh, maybe some young people will be listening to your wonderful program, because you, Tosik, have an amazing uh, uh, personality magnet, which uh, is equally effective for old men to young people. Uh, and uh, that's why the modes of production have changed. Uh, mediums of uh, information consumption has changed. Uh, if we used to uh, deliver long speeches, if we used to write long articles, now the span of memory or attention span uh, and the way young people read, maybe a small tweet, a small uh, post on Facebook, yeah. a picture or a small video, uh, Not more than three minutes. Better way to communicate with them than going for the traditional one. Yeah. Um, so this is how I recollect my things and journalism. I have never left. Uh, yes, along what with year? journalism, I have uh, adopted certain other skills yeah. which help me earn my living. So, uh, uh, you know, journalism today in especially electronic journalism, the anchors are, uh, uh, are very vocal, they're very sensational. Uh, what is your take on the journalism, especially electronic TV anchoring journalism done in Pakistan today? What do you think about that? Well, there is a abundance of media, but pluralities don't exist. Uh, Very nice. We have a hyper Very dose nice. of politics. Uh, then I would say, again, it is not that we are talking about, uh, uh, I'm talking to uh, from the platform of a German foundation, but have you ever watched DW? Oh. And their framing? One of my the way favorite. They pick up the uh, topics. Yes. Absolutely. From ordinary lives to uh, magnified uh, politics. So uh, I would say we, we need to bring in pluralities in media production. Uh, you can generate a lot of heat by doing uh, talking about politics and resolving nothing. But if you do the thematic programs, if you do the uh, uh, programs around people, uh, which hardly appear on uh, in our uh, televisions, except certain teledramas and uh, long plays. But in terms of uh, public service broadcast has died almost in uh, many countries. So that's why uh, you find abundance, but uh, instead of hope, you find more heat. Mm. True, true, very, very well said, very well put. Uh, Zabasa, what would you like to change about your past? Uh, I'm a very contented person. Um, I don't believe that uh, karma or reincarnation exists. But uh, of course, uh, if given a chance, uh, I would love my life the way I am. I would love to be a free person. I would love to be independent person. I love to be Democrat. I love to be a um, person cherishing uh, liberal political philosophies with slight socialistic tilt because you live in a, a society which has so many poor people, uh, equality of opportunity for yeah. them means a little bit of affirmative action. Uh, only thing maybe I would be more prudent in terms of uh, choosing my careers, uh, maybe a little more wiser with my money. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, the uh, careers, I will love to uh, profess democracy. I got opportunity to work with the parliament. These are the institutions through which um, popular sovereignty or citizens' voice is institutionalized into governance. I will stand for the rights of weakest, Foundation introduced me to the smallest minority in the world, living in a diverse society, the individual, the individual. of course. And uh, then the, uh, they also, because you also have the same field of communication. Uh, communication is the building block for the communities of interest and common pursuits. So I would love to do the same. 
keep the hopes about democratic future high federal organization of pakistan through parliament and much more civil liberties and freedoms of the citizens of pakistan and of course extending my solidarity to global citizens are you are you hopeful with pakistan's future why not we are going to celebrate our first century uh, 2047 next year we will be 75 uh, if i look uh, maybe it is a classical jargon glass half full glass half uh empty empty uh, we have done a lot of progress but we have inflation of problems as well that makes our uh, i recall the words of my friend arno keller uh, when we used to discuss why we find so many young people and at that time we were organizing them bringing them on the platform of liberal forum and all i said so many enthusiastic clear headed people are there what is missing among us and we realize two things regular civic education that's why i started civic citizenship education center for civic education and its initial seeds were also facilitated by the uh, fredrick newman foundation we all were friends who made this yeah, and yeah. the second thing that. was civic courage Uh, if you know if you uh, are passionate about it then there are two ways to react one is to internalize it write it or something but and the other one is to exhibit your civic courage and take a position and defend it uh, so uh, in that way um, if i look at my modest contributions towards pakistani society i have tried to do the both and finally how come i could be disappointed about the future we are the fifth largest country in terms of population it also imports the meaning we are the fifth largest market in the world so uh, in terms of consumption in terms of global relations and increasingly of course we have we have not been very enthusiastic to address all our development deficits and all but still we are uh, if you look at the emerging infrastructure look at the continuity of democracy and by the way very few people get the luxury to migrate i am not against migration but even if your land is conquered no conqueror asks the people to vacate the place and uh, inhabit the new one the raw material in terms of humans remain the same so my optimism is sooner the better we reform and polish this human resource so that bill- millions at least uh, billions will be too much because our population still lives in million uh, millions of new flowers of opportunity f- uh, new flowers of uh, uh, courage new flowers of hope new f- flowers of development will blossoms in pakistan and uh, i have all the reasons the only thing is that citizens from 24 hours of their life uh, if they spend only few uh, they can create miracles amazing amazing uh, overview of the optimism that you have for this country and i really loved uh, uh, the, the journey from civic education to civic courage i think these are the two words uh, which are um, which i take back home from the conversation so far civic education and so civic great yeah maybe uh, if you allow me the third one is civic contribution and if you want to see that uh, in court radha kishan when we were starting our liberal forum and all now there is one institution and anwar sahab has done a lot of contribution arno keller's contribution uh, and uh, civic contributions even examples could be given so the foundation has not only uh, contributed in civic education culminating little bit of civic courage sporting and 
appreciating civic contributions. If you have these three ingredients, uh, sky is the limit. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Zafar Saab, <clears throat> uh, what, <clears throat> talking to you, uh, when somebody meets you and uh, spends some time with you, uh, the first thing that somebody takes back home is that this is the person who's very well read, who's all the time into books. He, from philosophy to, uh, uh, to politics, uh, from literature to music, he's the one who has read hundreds and thousands of books already. What is your unwinding opportunity? What, what helps you to unwind? Is it the cats or the dogs or the or biryani or what is there? What is that we don't know about Zafar? Maybe um, what, another slogan which I picked up from IF was no thinking without drinking <laughs> and uh, smoking, um, uh, tea. Of course, uh, I have pet Milo and Oscar. Uh, today they know that I'm talking to you, so they are resting. They are not. Uh, otherwise, whenever I do Zoom, they uh, get their voice noticed. Uh -huh. uh, I read. Uh, maybe in that context, you will find me a boring person. Uh, I, I don't go to for a very uh, different kind of funds. I have a very limited menu of my uh, enjoyment. Uh, even when I get bored, I start reading something else. I may be uh, shifting the topics. If I'm bored with politics, maybe I sh uh, shift to literature. If I'm bored with literature, maybe I go to uh, history or biography, maybe some journalistic uh, works. So in that way, uh, my life is more confined to these things. Uh, you can imagine during the pandemic, um, I spent very little time outside and I never got bored in my room because I, my room has at least eight, nine offerings to me in terms of uh, reading, in terms of watching television, in terms of uh, writing and something. so on. And we yeah. will not go into details for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> well, there should be some secrets as well. Otherwise, life will be boring. I know. I just offer some. Tell me about Gumasbach, the academy at the at Gumasbach. What is how how do you define that place? It's so amazing. No, in fact, uh, uh, as in the beginning of the conversation, I said I was uh, very lucky that uh, when uh, in 1998 I first time went there, um, I got introduced to uh, different methods of training. Uh, then the thinking place, you know, people from all over the world. I developed very good uh, friendships with uh, uh, persons like uh, late uh, St uh, Stefan Malnick, uh, Arno Keller is still there and uh, uh, also got the opportunity later on to uh, facilitate two courses there as well but, uh, with other fellows. But uh, that was very thinking place. And I remember um, Germans have a habit of having dinner quite early. Yeah, Whereas so you know us, uh, Pakistanis, that is the last priority in the <laughs> night. So when I first time went there and we were so hungry after Halagulla and all, uh, and next day we went to the small market in the town. So we got the opportunity to visit the town. Uh, liberal archives, I said. Uh, then, uh, quite interesting literature as well uh, was available from all over the world about uh, liberal uh, initiatives. Um, but I liked the idea that there could be a civic learning space uh, where uh, not only the global um, um, people or ambassadors of uh, civility come and they, they get an opportunity to learn, uh, rather, there are simultaneous programs going for the German population. So, um, you, about Gummersbach, I again like one thing, that they don't give you uh, extensive uh, textbooks to read. Rather, uh, the methodology is to discover uh, a hidden person, the way I said, uh, my yep. hidden genes. 
and make ignite them to do something for their societies and the world for a whole. So I like that as well. I develop a lot of friendships. Many, I still have my relationship and friendship uh, with the persons who, whom I met for first time uh, as a participant in 1998. They are still in touch with them. Yeah. So in that way. Uh, now these new gathered some like um, Facebook and uh, they have made uh, these connections more easy. Uh, Zafar Saab, uh, what is, uh, this is my favorite question uh, for these sessions and this is the question I'm asking everyone and that is if you get a magic wand, what is one thing about this country, Pakistan, that you would like to change overnight? I will uh, move it upon our entire population so that if there is a magic pill, all of a sudden they become thinking minds with qual good quality arguments. If they will become thinking mind and good quality thinking minds, then they will be able to pursue their careers in a way that we will have abundance of creativity in every field. Other, nothing more I would expect from the magic man. Thinking minds. Thinking and uh, with quality of argument and creativity. <laughs> thinking of course, the uh, aberrations so, but, but, also your, think. Your wish list is too, too long. First, you want us to be thinking. No, but, but, but to... oh, see, you said that you are giving, uh, going to give me a magic. Your <laughs> question was not that whether magic is real or not. <laughs> if you can live in fantasies, so uh, let your fantasies. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Zafar Saab, tell me about your childhood. Were you a naughty boy? Were you a studious boy? To be honest, I was born um, near River Chanab, so that's why uh, romantic genes in my personality comes from there. Yeah, not your fault. Uh, then I spent my childhood in Jhang. I was not a very good student, to be honest. Um, I was more interested in extracurricular activities like quiz, like debate, like sports and all. Uh, then. Um, but again, you will be surprised. Uh, I used to write in children newspapers. I uh, recently, during I am, pandemic, I was collecting my... I'm uh, not surprised at all. <laughs> uh, so uh, I used to meet... Uh, Ishtiaq Ahmed was very popular write novelist. Yes. When I came to know that he lives in Jhang, I invited him to... Uh, we don't have drying rooms uh, in Jhang. We call it better. Betak, yeah. uh, small, which is like drawing room. He was kind, he came. I shared photograph of that even. Uh, and then I converted my batik into a literary space. So I was more like, that's why I'm saying if I get a second uh, life, I will do the same things. I enjoyed doing them. I found premium in doing that. Uh, of course, uh, about results. You can't predict. It is your efforts which count. Uh, society has many other factors. I just give you example. You were part of my project citizen, which was a school kids amazing civic education project. Yeah. How come if you are crossing through the educational jungle for 15 years and a small touch of three, four days of civic education will transform everything uh, it should be regularly embedded in the curriculum. Uh, when I was working with the Pakistan Institute for Parliamentary Services, we were lucky to um, facilitate um, passage of Civic Education Act for the federal level. Now I'm as a consultant uh, supporting the processes in the provinces. So uh, it is a continuous struggle. Uh, because every individual has to learn his or her lessons of civility. You, you can inherit so many things, but uh, uh, democracy, edu uh, civic education, every individual has to learn and do his 
or her own lessons. Zafar Saab, what are your fears personally and for this country? Fears, I would say, uh, unfortunately, we have lost thinking in terms of uh, wealth creation in this society. Rather, it has been criminalized. Uh, secondly, my personal fears I don't have. Um, to be honest, uh, life is a perishable reality uh, beyond your uh, control. Um, but whatsoever time, whenever I wake up uh, in the morning, uh, I thank God that uh, I have got another day to make a small contribution whatsoever way I can, maybe by writing something, maybe by reading something, maybe by talking somewhere. These are the things which I can do, uh, maybe taking care of my family. Uh, but uh, personally, I don't have any fears. Uh, but generally, uh, I am sometimes afraid the kind of hatreds, the kind of hate speech, the kind of extremism, uh, the kind of um, emotive involvement in issues uh, without understanding uh, the text or context, it worries. Uh, so we, we as humans have to invest more on understanding each other. Uh, and what are the avenues of understanding each other? Unfortunately, during the time of pandemic, the, many are closed, schools, parks, cinemas, cultural places, social places. So now uh, we have to be very vigilant and alert to create new spaces so that humans don't uh, forget the art of communicating with each other. You believe in freedom. Do you think freedom should have some limit, especially in the context of social media today? Uh, you know, uh, people are sometimes critical. I, 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 I know some very close friends, common friends, who, are, who, who, who believe that, yes, we believe in freedom, uh, but now is the time that, the free, that freedom should be checked. Do you believe that? No, freedom is never absolute. Uh, if you have read the liberal philosophy, there Comes is an other, other, other term is social responsibility or responsibility. Yeah. If you don't want to sound very canonistic that you have to take care of society uh, in that particular context. Uh, even the fundamental freedoms written in the constitution they are not absolute. Of course, right to life, unless you commit some crime, is absolute. Otherwise, there are qualifiers. There are societal qualifiers. There are legal qualifiers. Um, about uh, social media, unfortunately, uh, traditional media had some filters, like editorial controls. Here is a megaphone with everybody. Civility has the same megaphone. Obscurantists have the same megaphone. Extremists have the same megaphone. Creatives have the same megaphone. So now even these social media companies are coming up with some ideas how to restrain people like Trump, how to uh, block certain accounts. So. Of course, this is the beauty of human beings. First, they create a new world with their imagination. But when that uh, <laughs> re new reality is yeah. <laughs> uh, starts biting um, the, the very essence of humanity or uh, our existence and spaces are reduced, then you come up with the um, fences. And fences should be uh, rational it should not be used to curb freedoms. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen uh, on the name of regulation, we end up strangulating uh, so many things which should have not been strangulated. What, uh, what has been, uh, well, you have talked about it, the contribution the foundation has had and what Zofrula is today. But just one last question, what would you like to say to FNF uh, at the end of the session today. Keep your wonderful work. 
expand it. Best of luck. Zafar Saab, what an immense pleasure it has been to talk to you. Um, uh, always a learning experience. And today, you know, of course, in, in these sessions, I'm talking to, to people uh, I mostly I know. Uh, but this was the first session I was actually taking notes because it's always a learning experience from you. Civic courage, civic education, and civic contribution, the cycle. This is such a great learning for me today. So thank you so much. Uh, I really immensely enjoyed it. Thank, thank you, Tosi for your kind conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. You watched this special session with uh, Zafra Lakhan Sa, uh, one of our uh, mentors, and it's always so so learning to listen to him. Uh, this series, uh, uh, Freedom in Lockdown, is there for you. There are other sessions as well. Please uh, share them, watch them, take out some time. As Zafar was saying, our, our attention span is so limited now. We, 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 we want pictures, we want memes, we want videos, not more than three minutes, but this has been more than 30 minutes. But I think let's, let's start watching good content, uh, no matter it's more than three minutes. Share it. God bless you. Bye-bye.